This is the 12th lecture for MA1012. In this lecture, we'll learn an algorithm to bring a matrix to its row echelon form. Let's suppose we start with a system of, of equations, um, something like x1 plus 2x2 minus 6, x3 minus x4 equals 0, 2x1 plus 4x2 plus 7x4 equals 3, 6x1 minus 2x2 plus x3 plus 2x4 equals minus 4, and 3x1 minus 8x3 plus 2x4 equals 9. Now, we pointed out before that it's essential that in trying to organize the calculations that we put all the x1s in line together, they have to lie underneath one another, and all the x2s, and all the x3s, and all the x4s, and then all the constants should be on this other side of the story. So the left-hand side has the variables, the right-hand side has the constants. It's only once we've done that that we can see we can just drop the variable names and the equal signs and reorganize the whole story uh, in a matrix as 1x1, 2x1, 6x1, 3x1, 1, 2, 6, 3, 2, 4, minus 2, 0, minus 6, 0, 1, minus 8, minus 1, 7, 2, 2, Then we can put the vertical bar and put the numbers at the end, 0, 3, minus 4, 9, an augmented matrix. Now we start the process for trying to actually solve the equations. First we put ourselves at the top uh, up left, upper left corner here. Um, start here and call that the pivot. So that's our first pivot. And our um, always starting in the upper left. Now what we want to do is, um, if, um, the, uh, if the pivot is 0, um, then uh, find the first non-zero entry under the pivot. In this example, we don't have this problem. but. Um, if that had been a 0, we'd go down here and find this 2. So, um, and swap. Swap rows with it. We can only do things a whole row at a time. Every operation has to be a whole row all, the, all at once, because each row represents an equation. And so when we're, uh, we start with these equations, and each one of them generates the, a row, this equation here, 3x1 minus 8x3 plus 2x4 is 9, that gave us 3, 0, minus 8, 2, 9. Those numbers come from these numbers, and so they represent an equation. So when we, uh, when we work, we have to work a, a, a row at a time. So we'll swap rows to get a non-zero pivot. Um, so uh, the problem, of course, could arise if this fails. Um, what if there is no? There is no. Um, so we try to find the first non-zero. If there is no non-zero entry, then what do we do? Um, we've used up uh, this uh, this pivot. Uh, it's a zero. All zeros underneath it. And so we move uh, one step to move pivot. We pick up the pivot. Move one step left. Picking up the little pivot, the little bread box that I've drawn here. Pivot box. Um, and uh, move it to the left. Uh, sorry, to the right. We move it to the right. Um, one step horizontally. So that's what to do if the pivot's zero. Um, but uh, if, if, so that means that we've now ended up by repeating that process enough times, we've either gone all the way through the whole matrix finding nothing but zeros, or we've got ourselves to the um, uh, to a non-zero pivot. So now we have a non-zero pivot. Um, we've swapped into place. Um, now what we can do uh, is to try to get it to um, to be uh, to kill everything to kill everything underneath it. So the next step is um, we're going to 
um, add multiples of the pivot row to each row, one multiple to each row under it to kill, make, in other words, make into a zero everything under the pivot. So we've got this little red box in our story here. This guy's non-zero, so they didn't have to worry about the, all this step if the pivot's zero. What we have to do is to get multiples of that to add to everything underneath it. How would we do that in this example? In this example, um, we've got well, nicely. We've got a one as a pivot, which makes it easy. So if I take minus two of this row to this row, that'll kill the two. Similarly, if I take uh, minus six of this row to this row the first row to the third row, it'll kill that. And finally, if I'll want to take uh, minus three of this row to this row, and that'll kill the um, that'll kill the three. So that's how we do it, a whole row at a time. So we take minus two of this to this, 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 minus six, this to this, 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 and minus three, this to this, this to this, this to this, this to this, this to this. And that will kill everything under the pivot. And then, um, so that's what we do when we have a not pivot, a non-zero pivot. We do this to it, and then we um, make a new uh, pivot box. If the pivot successfully manages to be non-zero and kill everything under it, we make a new pivot box one step down and to the right. One step down uh, to the right. Note that this was moving one step over to the right, not down. This moves down to the right. So when we fail, this is sort of failure of a pivot. The pivot was zero and we couldn't find anything to swap. There was nothing we could swap into place. We just pick up the pivot box and slid it over. When we succeed, we don't slide the pivot box over. We make a new pivot box. We keep the old one drawn and we make a new one. Draw a new one under, and, uh, under it and to the right. It's also clear that whether we whether we failed in this situation and had to move uh, our uh, our pivot box over, or whether we succeeded and moved it down to the right, in either case we've moved to the next column, either by moving to the right or moving down and to the right. We've moved to the right, and so we're at the next column, the next step. That means that uh, after uh, finally many steps, this certainly has to stop. To understand this, obviously you have to do some examples. There's no way to get any idea of how this process works without trying some uh, some simple cases. So let's try one, and you should try obviously several others. So let's take a simple system of equations, x, 3x, 4x, uh, 0x, there are y's, plus y, plus y, and then plus 10z, minus 4z, plus 6z. Um, equals 5, equals minus 1, equals 1. Okay, so there's a simple system of equations we could try to solve. The first step, as always, is we have to make sure the variables are lined up, the constants are lined up on the other side, which they are, and then we can turn it into a matrix 1, 3, 4, 0, 1, 1, 10, minus 4, 6, and then 5, minus 1, 1. So there's the matrix of the system. And then the algorithm tells us we draw the little pivot box around here. The notes don't use a pivot box, but I think it's convenient and helpful to draw the little box. Um, it's a non-zero value, so we don't have to worry about swapping rows because we have a non-zero pivot to work with. It's going to successfully kill everything under it. What do we do to kill things under it? We're going to um, add a minus 3 of this row to this row, and we're going to add um, minus 4 of this row to this row, and that way the minus 3 times the pivot will kill the 3, and minus 4 times the pivot will kill the 4. Remember, we have to do everything a row at a time, so it'll be minus 3 this row to this one, minus 4 this row to this one. Um, and the first row won't be changed at all, because it's got the pivot in it, it doesn't change. So, first row stays the same, and 
pivot stays where it is. Once a pivot successfully has a non-zero value in it, little red box, it stays there forever. It never moves. Um, it might change its value if we decide to do the, the reduced row echelon form, but it's not going to move its location. Okay, so minus 3 that to that is 0, and then minus 4 that to that is 0. We've wiped out everything under the pivot. The pivot's killed everything underneath it. Um, but we have to do it a row at a time. Minus 3 this to this is 1. Minus 4 this to this is 1. Um, minus 3 of 10 is 30. Minus 30. Add it to minus 4 is minus 34. And um, and uh, let's see now. Minus 4 of 10 is minus 40. Add it to 6 is also minus 34. Um, so then minus 3 of 5 is minus 15. Add it to minus 1 is minus 16. And minus 4 of 5 is minus 20. Add it to 1 is minus 19. So again, what I did was to, I tried to get things things underneath the pivot killed, so I needed to add a 1 here. I had to get rid of a 3, so I had to make it 1 into a minus 3. So I multiplied by minus 3 and add it to 3, by minus 4 and add it to a 4. So minus 3 this row to this row, first row to second row, minus 3 first row to fourth row, to third row, and minus 3 first row to third row, and that'll make sure the 1 will wipe out the 3 and the 4. But you have to do everything a row at a time, so minus 3 the whole first row to the second row, the whole second row, minus 4 the whole uh, first row to the, so to the whole third row. Okay, so that gives me these values here. Now that pivot successfully wiped everything out underneath it. It's successfully a non-zero pivot with everything dead underneath it. And so according to the recipe, we slide down uh, and to the right. And that's our new pivot box. Um, now that's a non-zero pivot, so it's going to succeed and kill everything under it, so we don't have to worry about swapping rows. Don't have to do any row swaps because that guy's already not zero. And so all we have to do is wipe out what's underneath it. It's a one, so to wipe out a one, I have to do minus uh, one of this row to this row, the second row to the third row. Minus one, second row to third row, means they'll pivot one, will wipe out the one underneath it. Minus one times one added to one is zero. So again, these green little indicators are supposed to say minus 3 this row to this row, minus 4 this row to this row. So that way I indicate what row operation I'm doing. It's all with row operations, the entire row at a time. A whole row has to be operated on at a time. You can't just hit a single number with another number. You have to do a whole row at a time. Each row represents an, one of our original equations. Okay, so now uh, we've got um, to do minus 1 this row to this row. Uh, so we'll write down the first row doesn't change. Not doing anything to it. And the second row also doesn't change. We're not doing anything to it. But the third row changes because we're adding minus this to this, which isn't doing anything. Minus this to this is 0. Minus this to this is 0. Minus that is 16. Added to that is minus 3. And then uh, that gives us... Now, our pivots, again, they don't move. Once a successful non-zero non pivot has been, has been found, it stays there forever. It locks in place and that well, just wipes out things underneath it. That guy's locked in place and wipes out what's underneath it, so it won't ever change. And now, the recipe says, when you have a successful pivot that's killed everything underneath it, you move one step down to the right and you make a new pivot box here. Again, the notes don't really indicate the little pivot boxes, but I think they're helpful in trying to organize the calculation and see the locations of pivots. So the first row is not going to change. Um, the second row is not going to change anymore. They're done. Um, the third row, this pivot is a zero, and according to the recipe, if you have a zero pivot, you have to look for rows underneath it, of which there are none. This is the last row, so there aren't any rows underneath. You can't find anything to swap with, so you fail. That pivot fails to find its zero, so it can't be used as a pivot, and, and it can't, we can't find anything to replace it with from underneath it. There had to have to be somebody from a lower row to swap with. There's no lower row, so there's no swap possible. And so that's a failed pivot. And so the recipe tells us to slide it over here. So we'll just write down exactly the same numbers, um, but uh, slide the pivot over. So this pivot is locked in place, successfully killing everything under it. Uh, this one's locked in place as well. These, those were successful non-zero pivots. They did their job, and, and they're locked in place forever now. Um, and then this pivot uh, failed. It's a zero pivot, which is not allowed. And there's nothing underneath to swap with, so that's not going to work. And so we have to just follow the recipe and slide it over one step 
2 uh, to the right. 5 minus 16 and minus 3. Get a pivot box around here. And then uh, we can go back and look at our theory, which says that the pivots should solve for variables. This solves for the x variable. This solves for the y variable. But this pivot in the constants column means no x's, no y's, no z's equals minus 3. Obviously not possible. And so there's a pivot in the constants column. Um, and therefore, there's no solution. No solutions um, at all. Okay, so that system of equations that we started with must be inconsistent. These up here were actually inconsistent. It's not obvious they're inconsistent by just staring at them here. It's not so clear. You don't see that there are no solutions x, y, z to this, three si this system of three equations. But this tells us that there's no way to plug any way, any way at all to plug some value for x, some value for y, some value for z into all three equations and get all three to be simultaneously satisfied. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you do it. I prefer to draw the little pivot boxes, but they're not drawn in the notes, so that's fine. Uh, you don't have to draw them in your solutions either. But it may help you to see the structure of what's going on here. We've managed to solve for x in terms of y and z, solve for y in terms of z, but we can't solve for, there's nothing to solve for z, and there's a, an inconsistency here in that a constant is uh, solved for in terms of no x's, no y's, no z's, a non-zero constant. Okay, so that shows us what it looks like in practice, but again, you really do have to do several examples on your own of different types of linear systems where, in fact, different things happen, and there are several different examples in the notes you can work from. Um, and without doing several examples, you won't be good enough at this to be able to solve problems on the exams. I might also point out that in the, in the lecture notes, uh, the notation is somewhat different. Um, the, um, the notation is if you wanted to, to do what I've called adding, let's say, um, minus 3 row 1 to row 2. Uh, in the notes, it's written something like um, row uh, 2 minus 3 row 1 um, uh, beside the matrix. So there's some numbers in here, some numbers in here. Um, that that notation obviously not, not as clear to me what that means. It's easier for me. It, it involves fewer symbols and is easier to see what it means. Minus 3 of this to this. The little arrow symbol indicates where it's going from and to. Minus 3 of this added to that. Um, at least to me it's clearer what that means and it involves fewer steps to write down. Um, so, but you could use either notation, either this one or this one, whichever you prefer. It is very important, though, that you have some way of describing what your steps are, because it's almost certain that you'll make some arithmetic errors along the way at some step in your calculations. So, uh, so if you don't indicate what what step you're doing, uh, the the marker of your exam won't have any idea what step you took, and if it's wrong, it'll just be wrong. Uh, it won't be clear that you that it's just an arithmetic error doing the right step. Let's try and work out another example so we can see what it looks like when there are solutions because we've only seen what it looks like so far when there aren't any. Um, so if we took a, a system of equations um, that looks like, uh, so we'll take x, uh, 2x and x, plus 2y minus y plus y, um, and then minus 4z plus 2z minus 2z equals 10 equals 5 equals 7. Um, so let's see what happens if we try to solve that. Um, so we'll first write down the augmented matrix. So just take 1x, 2x, 1. So 1, 2, 1 x's. 2 minus 1, 1 y's. Minus 4, 2 minus 2. And then 10, 5, 7. It's easier to write it without all the equal signs and all the variable names. That saves you a bit of writing. And then um, what we want to do is to chart, start off with our pivot. Again, I like to draw a little box around it so I remember which one it is. Um, so that guy is a non-zero pivot, so it's going to successfully kill everything under it. And how does it do it? Um, well, it's a 1, so we only have to add minus 2 of row 1 to row 2. And at the same time, we'll add... Uh, minus 1 of row 1 to row 3. And that'll give us a uh, wiping out of what's under the pivot. The 1, one multiplied by minus 2, will give me a minus 2, and we'll add to the 2 to give 0. So that'll kill the 2. Um, so the next step 
um, is uh, that we have 1, 0, 0, uh, 2, and then minus 2, this uh, minus 2, 2 is minus 4, minus 1 is minus 5, minus 1, 2 is minus 2, added to 1 is minus 1, um, minus 4 stays the same, 10 stays the same, the first row stays all the same, which is important to remember, it makes it faster to calculate with. Um, let's see now, minus 2, 4s, minus 4s is 8, added to is 10, and then um, minus 1, minus 4s is a plus 4, added to minus 2 is 2, and then um, We've got to do minus 2 of the 10s, so minus 20 added to 5 is minus 15. And then we've got to do minus a 10 added to a 7 is minus 3. Okay, so there we have it. And then let's see what the pivot looks like. There's that pivot. It succeeded. It's a non-zero pivot. It's killed everything under it. And so we step down once uh, down to the right and get a minus 5 here. Okay, so now that's our next pivot. It's non-zero, so it's definitely going to succeed and kill things under it. What do we have to do to kill things under it? We have to uh, multiply by, um, it's a bit more complicated, minus 1 over 5. Minus 1 over 5 times minus 5. To minus 1 over 5 is 1, added to minus 1 is 0. So we get um, 1, 0, 0. Two. The first row is unchanged. Second row is unchanged. It's not going to do anything to itself. Um, and then finally, minus a fifth, so that to that, that's zero. Um, minus a fifth times 10 is minus 2, added to 2 is zero. Minus a fifth of minus 15 is minus 3, is plus 3, added to minus 3 is zero. So again, the pattern of pivots is. Um, this pivot here successfully kill everything under it. This one here kill everything under it. And when you're done that step, according to the, the theory, you're supposed to move on down one to the right. But that pivots a zero, which is not allowed. So it has to uh, find a row to swap with from underneath it. And there's no row to swap with. So that doesn't work. It fails. It's a failed pivot. And if a pivot fails, we don't, we, we, and we actually erase the little red box and slide it over and draw it over here. So We'll have exactly the same matrix. I'm not changing the numbers, just the pivot locations, which is important. The pivots really matter. So um, even though it looks like I'm not calculating anything because the numbers aren't changing in the matrix, I am making a, an important change in that I'm moving the location of the pivot over here. So these two pivots are locked in place. They've successfully done their job, killed everything under them. They, uh, with non-zero values, they can't ever move again. They're always locked in place. But this one moves because it's failed. It's a failed pivot. It was a zero that's not allowed. And it, you couldn't find anything to swap with from underneath it. And so it had to move over to the right. And it sits there. This one also fails. Um, uh, again, it fails because it's a zero and it can't find anything underneath it to swap with. And so it slides right off the end of the matrix and disappears. Um, so that's uh, one step we didn't really mention, that it is possible for things to actually, for pivots to disappear. If the pivot fails and goes right off the edge of the matrix, then it's gone forever. And um, our procedure uh, then stops because we're off the edge of the matrix. And so there we go. Um, we're done. And we end up with this pattern of pivots. OK, so that gives us the store, the final story. What does it say? It says, well, this last equation is all just zeros. So it doesn't really matter. And that's why it doesn't have any pivots in it. You don't need it. You can throw it away um, as far as understanding the solutions. This means that we can solve for x in terms of y and z and a constant. We can serve a, solve for y in terms of z and, and a constant. Uh, there's no pivot in the z, so z can be anything at all. And there's no pivot in the constants column, so the system is consistent. There's n there's a, there are solutions. There's no pivot and the constants, so there are solutions. There's at least one uh, solution. But this is a free variable, uh, very uh, variable, um, because it has no pivot. The pivots bind the variables. That tells you that x1 is solved for in terms of y and z. And constant. That's y being solved for in terms of z and constant. But there's nothing to solve for any z. There's nothing, no pivot in the z column. 
and so that means z is a free variable and so um, so solutions uh, exist and they are functions of the free variable well whatever the however many free variables there are in this case one z in this case so it means that this thing can somehow be solved for if we write it back as equations you can see it if you write that as an equation you get x plus 2x plus 2y minus 4z equals 10 and z's the free variable here um, and then this guy it says that minus 5y plus 10z equals minus 15 Again, z is going to be our free variable, so we've bound the variables up. We draw the little pivot boxes. There's the pivot that solves for x, the pivot that solves for y. The last thing is just 0 equals uh, 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0, so there's nothing, no need to even write that. So we can rewrite our system now as fewer equations. Uh, one pivot on the x solves for the x in terms of y and z. A pivot on the y solves for y in terms of z. And so we can, in principle, I haven't done it, we haven't actually gone through the steps to do it, but we could, in principle, solve this whole thing for y as somehow some expression in z, plug that in here, and then get x in terms of z. So you could solve it. We didn't actually do it, right? Uh, once again, I'm stressing the idea that um, we go to reduced, or sorry, we go to row echelon form. We don't go to reduced. This is only row echelon. It's not reduced. Um, not reduced. Um, because if we went to reduce row echelon form, we'd actually just see what is what are x and y as functions of z here. So it would be even easier to see what the answer looks like. But we don't need to do that for most linear algebra problems. Mostly we just need to know, are there solutions? Yes, there are, because there's no pivot here. And how many are there? Well, you can specify z as an arbitrary free variable, and the other variables are bound by pivots to have values in terms of the free variables. You put any value on it for z, and then these equations tell you what x and y are. Um, it's also important that the number of pivots has a name. In this case, there were two pivots. So the number of pivots is the rank. The rank of a system of linear equations um, or uh, the rank of of a matrix um, which represents such a system representing a system is the number of um, of pivots that show up when we um, go through this Gaussian elimination. The procedure we've been doing is called Gaussian elimination. Gaussian elimination. Um, so you go through this Gauss elimination steps, which we did pre previously. Let's go back and take another look. Um, these steps are called Gaussian elimination. And when you go through the various Gaussian elimination steps of adding rows to lower rows or of swapping rows if needed, um, the result is called, uh, is, called is, is a, a row echelon matrix. And the rank of a system of equations is the rank is the number of pivots that show up. Note that the that that's not those pivots don't show up until you go through the process. So you have to go through the steps of Gaussian elimination. As you go through the steps, pivots pop up, little red boxes in our in our description, and those little red boxes are 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 the pivots of the of the process. You don't see them right away. Uh, so going back to our example, if you looked at this matrix. I wouldn't know where the pivots were going to show up. I don't know where the pivots are going to show up. We only have we have to go through the steps, and as we go through the steps, we see, we uncover the pivots. We see where they show up. We saw that there were only two of them showed up here. We didn't see in the original equation, the original matrix, that there were going to only be two pivots. But it turned out there were only going to be two, and that's what we call the rank. This matrix has rank two because when you go through the process, you pop out only two pivots in the final the final step. Um, so that's the definition of rank. And what we've discovered, of course, is that because the, the, the pivots solve for variables, um, the um, solutions, um, we have the following obvious result. Um, if uh, there are solutions, uh, and that, that's exactly, we said there's no pivot 
in the constants column, that's when there are solutions. If there's no pivot in the constants column, uh, then there are solutions. Um, and then if there are solutions, then um, uh, there is uh, an R-dimensional family. Of solutions, sorry, n n minus r, not r, r minus r, of solutions where r is the rank. Why is that? Because each the rank is a, is the number of pivots, and each pivot solves for a variable. So that variable's out of the way; it's no longer free. Um, so the free remaining variables that aren't that aren't solved or that don't have pivots, that's n minus r, where n equals the number of variables. Sorry, it's n and a little r. They look very similar the way I write them. Um, so n is the number of variables. r is the rank. And n minus r is a for the number of free variables. There are r pivots. r is the rank, the number of pivots. But each pivot locks in place a variable um, if there aren't any in the constants columns. So um, in the constants column, there, if there's no pivot in the constants column, all the pivots occur in the variable columns. And each of them then binds a variable uh, to uh, to be solved for in terms of the remaining variables. So that's how many remaining variables there are still free n minus r. So we can see in terms of the rank how many solutions there are to a system of linear equations as long as there isn't one in the constants column. That's really important. You have to look and see if one shows up in the constants column. And if it doesn't then you can use this result. But if there is a, a, a pivot in the constants column then there aren't any solutions at all to the system. In the next lecture, we'll look at matrices.